An Australian doctor has become the first patient in the world to receive a personalised brain cancer vaccine. Professor Richard Scoiler, the co-medical director at the Melanoma Institute Australia, volunteered to receive the treatment after being diagnosed with the most deadly form of brain cancer in June this year. Richard joins us live from our Canberra studio now. Professor, really appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you. And firstly, I just want to say how sorry I was to hear about your diagnosis. Obviously, that would have been very devastating for everyone around you. Tell us a bit about how you went from the shock of finding out to deciding to use your own brain as a, essentially a, a guinea pig with these experimental treatments. Well, thanks, Ashley. It's great to, to join you. Um, well, I, how it all came about was I was actually in Poland and I climbed some mountains there after a conference and ended up having a seizure. A tumour was found in, in my brain and my wife contacted a, a, our close um, family friend who's also co-medical director at the Melanoma Institute and one of the, well, probably the world's leading expert in the use of immunotherapy. And and, and um, our team started looking at my scans and, and, and really on the ball expecting that this was a nasty type of brain cancer called glioblastoma. And when we looked things up as far as treatment and prognosis goes, the treatment hadn't changed in 18 years and the prognosis was quite poor. My, uh, the odds of me surviving um, uh, average was, they told me, was nine months. So we thought about some of the things we'd done in melanoma. So 15 years ago, if you had melanoma that had spread around your body, less than 5% of people were alive five years later. But thanks to the amazing research that we've led at the Melanoma Institute with colleagues around the world, now the five-year survival rate for advanced melanoma is 55%. So the idea came about that why don't we use some of these therapies that we've developed in melanoma and are now used in many other cancers like lung cancer, renal cell cancer and head and neck cancer in melanoma, uh, sorry, in my brain cancer. And what we've shown in melanoma that if you give this Im immunotherapy early on in treatment, it's much more effective than what it is by waiting till the disease becomes very advanced. So um, after a lot of hard work by Georgina in particular, but, but many other people, finally we got people on board supporting this as worth a shot and give it a crack. So I had immunotherapy, combination immunotherapy before my tumour was resected. And um, that was a world first to, to try this. And um, the idea is we know we can activate the immune system much more vigorously if you get the drugs early when the immune system is, when the tumour's there, because the immune system will get more activated. And we had an opportunity to compare a biopsy of my brain taken before the immunotherapy with um, one that was done, or a resection that was done about 16 days after the biopsy. And the, what we found was truly amazing. It, 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 the number of immune cells in my uh, tumour had gone up 10 times and the types of immune cells have become activated that f fight against the enemy, so the tumour. And we're also able to show that these uh, drugs, immunotherapy, cross the blood-brain barrier and, and were attached to both the tumour cells and, and the immune cells, which gave us confidence. We've been t told early on that perhaps th these drugs won't cross the so-called blood-brain barrier, but, you know, I knew that was wrong. We'd proven in melanoma that they do, so it seemed like the, the right thing to do, to, to give it a crack, and, and, yeah, I was happy to be the guinea pig, first patient in the world to embark on, on this form of treatment to see if we could improve the dismal prognosis and, and treatment that hasn't changed in essentially in 18 years. It sounds like remarkable So that's how it all began. Uh, and then... So far, yeah. What do they mean for your prognosis or is it too early to tell? I assume it's still a really long road ahead for you. Yeah, that's ex exact. It's exactly right, Ashley. It's scientifically very exciting, but we don't know whether this will change into a into a clinical benefit um, longer term, and we won't know that for some time. The other thing that I've also only just started the other day was a anti-cancer vaccine, and I think I'm the first patient in the world to have an anti-cancer vaccine associated with neoadjuvant combination immunotherapy, and and that's an exciting. Uh, 
uh, alternative path or an alternative route that will, will also act to try and boost my immune system at fighting my cancer. The problem with my cancer is it's got these sort of sneaky periphery that goes off like tentacles or um, tree roots and, and you can't get rid of it with surgery or local therapy because it just goes too far and you wouldn't be left with enough functional brain to either be alive or really have functional capacity. So we have to find a treatment that can select out the tumour cells but maintain your normal brain so you can still stay alive and, and, yeah, and, and hopefully function normally. So, yeah, that's the aim and... So far, things are looking optimistic, but we really won't know until down the track. But one thing I'm really excited about is already we've got feedback from experts around the world that they're blown away by what we've been able to demonstrate. And, and I know that, that there, it looks like some um, drug therapies will be used for brain, future brain cancer patients and perhaps some clinical trials will be started to test this because it needs to be proven in clinical trials before it can be brought out for, for all patients as, a, as standard treatment. Yeah, and that's an important point to make, isn't it? That anyone watching this interview and, and knowing someone or perhaps going through a similar situation themselves need to know that this is still very early days, in it, isn't it, in, so in terms of using this intervention more widely. I know that doctors aren't generally known to be the best patients. Did you get a lot of blowback, a lot of pushback on, on your bid to, well, to try this sort of stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. To, to be perfectly honest, Ashley, in the initial phases, there was a lot of resistance because it's not a treatment that's not without risks. And the risks are that I might die sooner, I might still stay alive but have complications that will make my life miserable. But I, I think as as a leading cancer researcher, clinician and clinical leader who's been involved in the development of these therapies in other fields, it, it took quite a bit of convincing to get people on board who, who were scared about it. But my wife and I wrote long letters explaining what the risks are and that we were willing to take them on as uh, to give it a crack. And with Georgina's support, we eventually got a team of clinicians on board to, to make this happen. And um, yeah, I'm very proud and happy with the team that's working slow, so closely with me and, and supporting me to, to see if we can break open the field to improve the prognosis for people with the subtype of glioblastoma or that subtype of brain cancer that has a very dismal prognosis um, that I've unfortunately got. Richard, it's such an inspirational story. Congratulations on the breakthroughs that you've made already. And gosh, I think everyone watching would agree that our fingers and toes are, are firmly crossed for you. We really hope that it works for you. Thanks so much. Yeah, th thanks so much, Ashley. I really appreciate it.